Hello everyone. Today we will discuss about isoniazide in detail. In between, I will also share some memorizing tips, so stay tuned. Isoniazide is the single most important drug used in tuberculosis. It's a small molecule that is freely soluble in water. That's why it is passively diffuse in the mycobacterium. Here are two points you should remember here. This picture will help you to remember these two points. First, this drug is effective against both intra as well as extracellular organisms. And the second point is, it is bacteriostatic against resting bacteria and bacteriocidal against rapidly dividing organisms. So overall it is most effective against rapidly dividing organisms. Now let's discuss about the mechanism of action. Isoniazid is a prodrug. It is activated by mycobacterial catalyst peroxidase which is represented by CAD-G and the activated INH inhibits two enzymes. Acyl protein carrier reductase which is represented by INHA and acyl protein carrier kinase which is represented by KSA. These two enzymes are required for mycolic acid synthesis. This mycolic acid is essential component of mycobacterial cell wall synthesis. That's how INH disrupts the bacterial cell wall formation and kill the bacteria. Thus, by inhibiting mycolic acid synthesis, INH actually produces bacteriocidal effect. Resistance can be seen due to mutation of CADG gene and CASA gene or overexpression of INH A gene. CADG gene mutation is the most common mechanism and is responsible for the most severe form of resistance. It might be associated with ethambutal resistance, so keep this in mind. INH A gene overexpression and case A gene mutation leads to low level of resistance. You should remember that isoniazide is metabolized by river and excreted by kidney. Now the uses of INH. INH is first line drug for tuberculosis and is drug of choice for latent tubercular infection. And it is also used as prophylaxis of TB. As we have already discussed that it is bactericidal drug against both intra and extracellular first growing mycobacterium. However, it has static effect on slow growers. Among the first line drugs, it is the drug that makes the patient non-infective earliest. Here one point you should remember that it is not effective against mycobacterium avium complex. Now the dose. The typical dose of isoniazide is 5 mg per kg per day or 300 mg once daily. For serious and infection and malabsorption cases, you can give 10 mg per kg per day. Now the most important things about isoniazide is its side effects or adverse effects. Here this unique picture will help you to remember all the important side effects. Isoniazide maximum crosses the blood brain barrier and is associated with multiple neuropsychiatric symptoms like memory loss, hallucination, euphoria or even epilepsy. One of the most important side effects is peripheral neuropathy. Isoniazide inhibits pyridoxine phosphokinase which is required to convert pyridoxine to pyridoxal 5-phosphate. Here you can see. Isoniazide also directly inhibits pyridoxal 5-phosphate. Since Pyridoxal 5-phosphate is required for GABA synthesis. Isoniazide does inhibit synthesis of inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA or gamma amino butyric acid. One point you should remember that in slow acetylators, peripheral neuropathy is more common. Whereas in first acetylators, hepatotoxicity is more common. Rifampicin can increase the hepatotoxicity of isoniazide. Isoniazide can cause sideroblastic anemia. It can inhibit delta amino levulinate synthase, which leads to decrease in heme synthesis and sideroblastic anemia. Pyridoxine being a cofactor for the enzyme can be used for treatment. Pyridoxine replacement can improve symptoms of peripheral neuropathy, neuropsychiatric side effects, and anemia as well. 
The dose for pyridoxine is 10 to 20 mg per day for adults and 5 mg per day for infants. Arthritis involving the upper limb known as shoulder hand syndrome can be seen. Patient with isoniazid toxicity can present with drug refractory seizures, metabolic acidosis and coma. In that case, intravenous pyridoxin is the drug of choice for the treatment. Antiepileptics like benzodiazepines and barbiturates are effective for seizures, but conventional drugs like phenytoin are not effective. Lastly, it can cause hepatotoxicity and gynecomastia. That's all guys. Please like, comment and share and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.